YouTube and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today we are drinking this big monster of a beer that I picked up at the LCBO yesterday. This is Schneider Weiss Cuvée Barrique. It's part of their TAP series. This is TAP X. So the TAP series has uh, basically been, excuse me, sorry, has basically been like uh, playing on things. Uh, I've seen a porter in it, uh, Nelson Savine beer, which was amazing. Uh, now this. Now the only thing I've ever had with barrique in it was Panil Barrique, and that was an Italian sour beer. So I'm kind of curious about this one. What do we have back here? Uh, that's not English. 9.5% alcohol. Oh my god. Well, the 750 for $10 doesn't bother me as much at 9.5. Uh, since that means that I'm basically paying for a bottle of wine, I'm okay with that. Uh, ingredients. Water, wheat malt, barley malt, hops, and yeast. If you're wondering why they're bolded, it's because they are allergens product of Germany. Okay, let's quickly just uh, look at this guy, see if there's anything worth noting on here. I can't actually read this, so... I don't know what it's saying. Anyway, let's throw her out of the way. Uh, yeah. I'd hope it doesn't blow up. That's my biggest hope. Pneel Barrique always blew up on me every time I drank it. So. Oh god. Oh god, that was a good pop. Oh, there we go. There you go, look at that. L very little head. Uh, with the pop that was on it, I expected more head. And I see uh, the beer level rising in there. This is one of the uh, anti-air caps, the anti-oxidization caps. So it's a normal beer cap and then a plastic plug underneath to make sure no, elk, uh, no air gets in. Uh, these things are actually worth a good deal too, so you take these and you add them to the champagne bottle and you've made this a pretty expensive beer to begin with. Um, ooh, that's like diarrhea brown, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't think the light's going to pick it up here, but only you can kind of see it right up here at the top. It's like a beautiful diarrhea brown, beautiful because I like to poop. Let's give her a sniff. Mm. Hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, God, that smells good. You get like an oak and vanilla. I'm curious if it was uh, barrel aged. Uh, but you get an oaky vanilla scent on there. Uh, you get a. This probably would tell me, but I can't. I can't get it to focus enough or zoom in enough for me to see it. Anyway, yeah, vanilla oakiness it just pops. It just pops. It it kind of reminds me of Innocent Gun, the vanilla and oak that comes off of that. Uh, but then I'm also getting like a black cherry. 
and a very, very apparent malt nose on here. So very malty, very sweet, kind of cherry-like, a little bit of tartness on that cherry, and then uh, vanilla and oak tannins. Smells divine. Let's try it. Cheers. Okay. This isn't just divine. This is fucking spectacular. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's spectacular. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful, divinely, divinely beautiful little sour beer. <sighs> Vanilla and oak does come out. The oak is all the way through the middle to the end. I mean, the oaky, the oaky tannins are still there in my mouth right now. Sort of a little vinous sourness at the very background. Forefront, a little bit of a cherry taste, a little bit of a weedy maltiness. Yeah, forefront, weedy maltiness, a little bit of cherry, and then the, uh, then like a, a roastiness and the oak come in, probably like, uh, basically like the, like, like a nice oaken barrel that's been toasted pretty well, like a retoasted barrel. So that roasty oak comes in right after the fruit and wheat taste. And it fades into a vanilla and roast taste that then goes to a tart roastiness. You still get that roasty, toasty taste all the way through with a tartness. Now this is 9.5% alcohol. 9.5% alcohol, and there is a little bit of warming in your chest, but not that much. There's no astringency on the flavor profile. There's no nothing really in your throat. It's all in the chest after it's been swallowed. And uh, in all honesty, somebody might mistake that for the for the sourness of the beer. Excuse me. I love this beer. You hold it in your mouth and do the wine slurp. You get even more of the wood and more of the uh, more of the vanilla just popping into your mouth. And adds just a little bit more sourness at the end. And that sour is cut by the roast at the very very end. It's sour and roasty, and you don't get that you don't get that sharp astringent turn that a lot of um, tart beers do. Because the roast comes in, it's like, here's the roast, here is the ast sour astringency, and usually sour astringent beers come, and then come right back, and they coming, and they're starting to come back, and the roast is like, fuck you, bitch, and pushes it out of the way. Like my analogies? I like my analogies. <sighs> and the more I drink it, the more I realize just how much I actually do love it. out of 10 on this beautiful, beautiful beer. I'm going to give it a uh, 9.5. I love this beer.
Uh, it was like ten dollars. I think it was. Uh, I don't remember if it was nine ninety five or ten ninety five. So it might even be. Uh, it might even be eleven dollars. But I don't care. I'll buy this again. I'm gonna go buy another bottle of this. I hope there's still another one, because I want more. Thank you guys. Bye.